But that's the choice Paul made that Peter didn't make. And one was an apostle to the Jews, the other an apostle to the Gentiles. That's my choice. If you choose to be Peter, that's fine. If you choose to be Paul, that's fine. I choose to be Paul. That's, that's me. So I can preach the gospel without charge. Also empowers me to say what I have to say anywhere I'm invited to minister. Because I'm not going there for an honorarium. As if you are. There's some things you won't be able to say. As the man will say, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Speak the mind of God. Pay my own fair going. Pay my own fair coming. And not expecting to receive anything. If I get it, I get blessed. Happy. I'm thankful. If I don't, I go back home. That's part one. But well, somebody needed to hear this. But when you see that lighthouse or in lighthouse, you need to be able to interpret what you're hearing from this standpoint. You just don't think someone is talking because he wants to say whatever, not in a race against anybody. And I'm not comparing myself with anybody. I don't go from church to church trying to say, what are they doing so that we can learn? I'm not saying you can't learn from people. I'm not in a race with anybody. If at all I'm in a race, it's a race against God's purpose for my life. Every time I have to keep looking at it, this is what he said, this is where I am. I'm running, I'm pressing towards the mark. Which mark? It's not the mark that you have. It's the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I run my own particular race recalibrating marriage ask your neighbor so what's your marriage like and if you're not married what's your marriage going to be like can i share something with you and i know that i'm probably the only one who feels like this my marriage at the beginning was painful. It was a traumatic experience. There's no difference between someone who survived an air crash. <laughs> Why? Because I tell you the truth. And me. I thought my wife was the devil. She thought I was the father of the devil. <laughs> but let me tell you this in all of that, I never hit her once. I never spoke insultive or derogatory words towards her. Never did once. I never tried to demean her. Never tried to bring her down publicly or privately. Never did. And nobody would have ever known if we never said it out. And when I say things like this, it's not because I want to gloat in my past. It's because I want to show you that I once sat where you now sit. I've been there. We lived on get by street. We never lacked, but we never had more than enough at the end of every month we will balance only the budget and like you said this morning you see because my heart has and, and it's not today from, from the days of my youth I've always been disposed 
to do good. Generosity was my... It's always been a part of me. Because I read it in scripture. And God took me through a process. I remember getting saved. I had about... This was 19... 1987 and sometime in 1988 I went God told me he said go to your bank and go withdraw all the money that is in it and I had I think it was 2,500 naira then and I went and cleared my account Niger State at the what's the name of that roundabout in the city center again I've forgotten. Moby roundabout. Thank you. There were beggars lined up in there. And he said, give them 100 naira each. You think it was easy? I said, 100 naira to beggars who would never remember me. But I went. And when I dropped the 100 naira, the guy would look as if what happened. Are you okay? Until I gave everything out. But it did things in me. It changed my spiritual orientation. And reconfigured me. To be ever willing and ready to distribute and bless people. I love to help people. Love to help people. That's just me. But I will give things and my wife will think, ah, look, we don't have enough. And you're giving, or we just have enough. And you're giving so much, just like your wife, your husband gave two cars to pastors and here you are walking by the street and they didn't even give you a lift. You were offended by that. They didn't need to give you a lift. That's the honest truth. Why should, I mean, and I know the feeling because I probably will feel like that too. They didn't need to give you a lift because you gave the cars, not that they should give you a lift. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? And, and that's how offenses can come. Thank you for sharing that. But I would do the same. We got into all kinds of issues, misunderstandings, and won't talk to each other for three days, two days, then we'll come together, talk to each other, and then we'll survive for another month, and then we'll talk to each other for three days, and then we'll survive. And it just kept going and going and going and going on and on and on and on, until it, come to, it came to a point we hadn't talked, I think, for four days. So we had set a new record. And when I say not talking to each other, I'm not, it's not silence like, oh, hi, uh, how, how is your day? Fine. Okay, uh, is my food ready? Yeah. You go eat, and you're quiet. And then everybody faces, you face the north, she faces the, the east and, and you know, south, and, and you're just doing, you, we still slept on the same bed. Still did. Do you know why? Because we made that commitment before we got married. No sleeping in different rooms, no matter what happens. But she will face one side, I will face one side. And there will be a gap between fixed that no man can cross. <laughs> but you know something? After you've done it for three days and sexual pressure comes, then you have to set too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> 12 midnight your hand will be crossing that gulf before you, you move you make sure your leg is touching <laughs> oh god Make up again to break up later. I never maltreated her. I fulfilled my responsibilities as a husband. I've had my own challenges. I've had my own struggles. I'm such a lover of God. 
that God's word will always take preeminence in my life. I say this so that you can understand that your situation is not beyond remedy. But the question is, are you willing to let God? I pray you are. Before he encourages your degeneration. Can we close now? Because maybe this is what somebody needs to hear. Maybe this is all someone needs to hear. Ephesians chapter 5. Maybe I'll say one or two things in addition to this. Because the timer tells me I have two minutes left. The timer is there. Try to regulate myself so I don't preach an everlasting gospel. (laughs) Verse 21. Well, let's stay with verse 1. Verse 1. Give me verse, verse 1. Therefore, be what? imitators of God as dear children. The word imitate is the word in the Greek mimitis. Do you know what it do you know do you know what it literally means? Is what your son or daughter does when you take off your shoes and they put their small feet in your shoes. And he puts on your jacket and is touching the ground. And he tries to walk like daddy. And he says, this is how daddy walks. That's mimetes. It means you just do exactly what you see your father do. If I treat my wife right... Every man in this house must treat their wives right. With honor, with dignity. Must love them. You have your own challenges. Work it out. We all did it. I don't know about you, but I did try to walk like my dad, try to dress like my dad, try to talk like my dad, try to act like my dad. That's it. Be ye imitators of God, dear children. If we would only imitate him, we'll rise triumphantly through whatever the enemy may bring and walk in love. That's the walk there now. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. And this is to everyone, irrespective of your marital status. And has given himself to us, or for us, an offering. Say to your spouse, I am an offering given to you. Say to your spouse, okay, your wife, your, your wife is, 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 but when you get home, Say it. I'm an offering given to you. I am a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But if we can kill this demon, things will get better. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. For many, this is where the problem is.
we will get to it. Well, let's go to verse 20. Oh, no. Let's, let's go on. Let's, I don't know. But let, this scripture is, is such a blessing. Because you would think people know this. So if you think fornication alone is the issue, it says no filthiness or foolish talking or coarse jesting, which is not fitting, but rather the giving of thanks for this you know. Do you know this? Ask your neighbor, do you know this? Know what? For this you know, no fornicator, unclean person, covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let's read it in the message translation. I want to make heaven. Paul said, I will hate to be disqualified having preached to others. Others will get in. Then when is your turn? Say, hey, where do you think you're going? Say, but those who went in, I brought them in. Say, no, that you brought them in doesn't mean you're going with them. Go to the other house. Verse 1. You know, these are basic foundational truths of Christendom. And the reason I feel such a bearing on them today is that some of the things we assume people know, they don't know. They don't know. Watch what God does and do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Behavior is learned. Consciously, unconsciously. Some you will learn, some you will catch. Okay. My father, in his first year in secondary school, bought a camera and was taking pictures and was making money. I got into secondary school, first year. I bought a camera. And I was taking pictures. The only thing was I was giving mine away for free. <laughs> now, how would you tie two generations together in one singular act? Did he tell me or encourage me to take on photography? No. It was caught, not taught. And I see my son's capacity today in leadership in school. He's his assistant head boy. I go back myself. And I would have fit into that role. My father told the principal, don't make him. <laughs> because I need him to focus on his studies. He won't read. I was penciled down. Because there was a gap between when the, 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 the form fives were out and there was a vacuum of leadership. And at that point, I would gather all the junior boys. I didn't have to be told. Gather them and say, let's go wash the toilet in the morning. Nobody told me. They make sure they washed all the toilets and cleaned up all the hostels. And, and the housemaster saw that and said, this man has what it takes to lead people. Things are caught. Behavior is learned. There's some deliverances that you don't need prayer for. If you change your environment, you are totally delivered. If your father never slapped your mother, it would take something, I don't know how to put it, so grave. To bring you to the point where you slap your wife. But if your father did it. And you saw it. No matter how much you hated it. One day. If you don't let the fruit of the spirit develop in you rightly. One day. Bah, you slap her. 
And then you will think back and remember, these are ghosts from the past. The same way if your mother disregarded your useless man. That's how I began coming. See how much you gave me 500 now. <laughs> Look. There's a natural DNA. There's a spiritual DNA. The problem with many of us is we don't, we don't disconnect from our parental DNA. Unplug and replug in Christ. And let all that flows through you be all of Christ. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. That's what I call foolish love. Say so you love people too much. Just love them. You just keep loving them. You just, uh, how, can you, how can you love like that? That's the kind of love. Extravagant love. Not cautious. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Uh, just open up. You say, what if I get hurt? You will get healed. As long as it's the love of God you're radiating. He didn't love in order to get from us. Haba. Look, it was not what he wanted to get every young man. If you're looking for a lady and you can find one and, and you see yourself as, oh, I, I can enhance this person's life. I, I can add value. I can bring uh, components of God's grace and, and improve this person's If that's our perspective, vice versa as well what would we hold us from building beautiful homes but most times when we engage is because of what we can get he has a good job he would take care of me what about you taking care of him she looks good everywhere i stand i'll be able to say behold my wife And that's all. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Don't allow love to turn into lust. Setting off a downhill slide into sexual promiscuity. Filthy practices or bullying greed. Though some tongues just love the taste of the of gossip some tongues they love their taste buds it's for gossip <laughs> that woman in church what's, what's, what's her name Seth? Udok she thinks she's the only one that can dance. Karin, Karin Kalabash. <laughs> Is it Kalabash? What was it called again? Is it, it's called Kalabash? No, there's, it's Sheker right now in, in Yoruba, but so in, in your climb, it's what? Kalabash. Okay, Karin, Karin Kalabash and, and dancing to the front. She wants to be conspicuous. <laughs> I've known this woman for 20 something years. She knew her way back then. This is all she's done. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about being conspicuous. It's her own method of, of worshipping God. She's done it for over 20 years. You talk about things you don't know. As your taste. <laughs> you, you, you know what is, do, do you sometimes at home feel like eating certain things? Let me tell you what I feel like eating sometimes. You know when, 
when the rainy season is about to start and the scent of water comes I feel like eating sand <laughs> does that happen to you sometimes when the winds are blowing I would actually come out <sighs> because I ate sand as a child and, 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 and sand is, 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 a, is a cuisine that is, you, you, must, you must acquire the taste for it. Not, not everybody likes it, but you, must, you just must acquire, it's an acquired taste, if you get what I'm saying. But, yeah. Or is your tongue just itching for what to talk about? Is that how your tongue itches? This is me in my pastoral grace. Not always like this. Say, have you noticed pastor's shoes? It's the same shoe he has been wearing for five weeks. Did you buy him another one? I've worn these shoes now. I don't know. I don't care. I'm serious. I don't care. Next week, Sunday again, I wait. I have to change colors every time. So when you leave church, you say, wow, our pastor is a power dresser. I would hate that to be a testimony about me. Have you seen that man? When he dresses for you, even Versace will bow. Because when God called us, he called us to a fashion parade. Is that so? I'm not saying don't dress well. I do. But it's not about what you wear. Christians have better uses for language than that. Don't talk dirty or silly. That kind of talk doesn't fit our style. Thanksgiving is our dialect. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. The problem with you is that some of you live in Coco Mansion. You didn't hear me. So I said again. The problem is that some of you live in Coco Mansion. You know what is Coco Mansion? Who said that? <laughs> you consider yourself a Coco Let. And one day there will be trouble that will come against you. And without knowing, you say, Debanj, in the name of Debanj. You will forget the name of Jesus. I'm t Look, what is in you under pressure will come out. It takes pressure to bring it out. Someone was going to have a model accident. This, this, is, this, is a, this is a supposed pastor. The car was about to, to crash. Shango, Shango. <laughs> ah. True story. Because what is in you? If you squeeze orange juice, what comes out? It will come out. Have you ever use, heard me use vile language? Have you ever heard words like shit come out of my mouth? You've known me for how many years? Because I've allowed the Holy Spirit to tame my tongue. 
It's an unruly evil that needs to be tamed. It has capacity, according to James, to set on fire the whole course of nature. Nations have fought wars because of the tongue. Marriages have been destroyed because he said, she said, they said, we said, There's a rule of the house that I'm sure many of you do not know, but you see it every day. When in doubt, ask questions. Do not ask anyone who is not party to the problem or to the solution. If anyone does not adhere by these rules, do not make a ruler, they will draw crooked lines. If you have doubts about me, come and ask me. Pastor, this is what I heard about you. Is it true? But do you know how we've been raised? Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. See no evil. Hear no evil, say no evil, do no evil, stay in your own climb. What stops you from asking? The pastor said, where church members ask their pastor's questions, the church doesn't grow. Did the disciples of Jesus not ask him? So who are we building our lives after? Can't your children ask you questions? My daughter once rebuked me years ago. I was driving in the car, eating a banana. I wound down the window, threw the peel out. She was behind. She said, Dad? I said, yes. She said, that's not right. Ah, hey. That's not right. You, me. She said, you are littering the environment. And that's not right. I humbled myself. I said, you know, daughter, you've got a point. I'm sorry I did that. I won't do it again. Have I been tempted to do it? Yes. Some years later, I was, I was eating biscuit. And, and, and I just don't like glitter around me. I wound down the window. I was about to... I saw her in the review mirror. <laughs> I put it down quickly. Because that little girl, and she's 18 now, she's no longer a little girl, she's a woman, has become a guide for me by the principles that she upholds. When you're in doubt about somebody, why don't you go ask? Mukola, this is what I heard about you. Is it true? We know what we do. We won't ask. We'd rather go to somebody else. Dabota. Do you know, do you know Bukola? Say, no, I don't know. She, she led worship today now. Hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> the thing we are here. Honestly, I can't, I can't even tell you. Promise me that you will not tell anyone. <laughs> and because she wants to hear, she says, I promise you. But that promise is broken as it is being made. Because you go to the next one and you say, if you know what I heard today, promise me <laughs> that you won't tell anyone. These are spots in a feast of charity. This is what makes us still plug back into Adam. 
even husbands and wives are like that. We're still sowing fig leaves to cover ourselves. Can't truly really be naked. That was part of what you talked about this morning. We can 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 be open to one another, and yet we say we're we we we're, we're members of Lighthouse. Can't trust you with with my woundedness. Because I don't know how you're going to use it against me. So I'd rather hide it. And a wound that is not treated festers. Gets worse. Worse and worse and worse. Instead of saying, Pastor C, I'm wounded. Is there any remedy? We'll cover it up. So I love your suit. Wow. But beneath the suit is a festering wound. With perfume sprayed over it so it doesn't smell. It's eating you up. You can be sure that using people or religion or things just for what you can get out of them, the usual variations on idolatry will get you nowhere and certainly nowhere near the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of God. My intention today was to share with you on kinds of headship and leadership and how it hurts marriages. I will touch that next week by God's grace. I pray somebody has been blessed. Next week, Saturday, Covenant Keepers is going to be meeting with me. Another time with men. It's a men's only meeting. And it's taking place here at 5 p.m. There are handbills that have been given. And the theme is taking off the mask. So when you come, be ready to take off your mask because we'll, we'll, take, we'll take it off. Let's see you face to face. Everything that obscures us from seeing the word of God will take off. I want to see face to face and talk face to face. If you are not there for the last one, which was last month, you can't afford to. I mean, it's so liberating to hear men talk about issues they've had, how they resolved it, how they let the Holy Spirit walk through them. What a blessed time. There are handbills or whatever. I don't, what flyers? Because they fly. It's available. It's going to be given to you after the service. And the tribe, I'd already mentioned this, on the 19th, which is Friday, are having a fizzy versus swag. <clears throat> a 90 minute experience. And for the first 50 people who come, there is what? Chicken chicken and chips. Is that right? Yes. Free. Yes. Can I come? <laughs> no, because I like food. Everybody can come. First 50 people. Chicken and chips free. Have a wonderful... I don't know what it's all about, but I know the spirit of the house. It will line up with the spirit of the house. A fizzy versus swag. Which one is, is better? Swag is better. Saved with amazing grace. <laughs> All right. That's wonderful. And that's the tribe is, is the youth expression of, of Lighthouse. So for those of you who are new and don't know, that's the name of that youth expression of, of the Lighthouse. 
If you consider yourself a youth, be there. It's at Silverbird Entertainment Center at the next cafe, third floor. Free chicken and chips. Why am I emphasizing it? Many, many people follow Jesus for food. He said it himself, but he didn't drive them away. When they were hungry, he provided the food for them. Because in eating, the word of God will be sown in your heart as a seed amen i pray that i've been able to set you on paths that are right today i pray i pray the one thing you can't change is you can't stop me from loving you you can't it's too late too late. We may disagree, but we will not be disagreeable. Most times when, when we're in Lagos and I'm 